Brown Lounge. I'm Holly Brown, and tonight I'm making penne alla vodka, one of my very favorite recipes. So tonight I'm going to show you how to make not only penne alla vodka, but I'm going to show you how to make your own tomato puree to go into it. So let me tell you what's in it, and then we'll get started. So first of all, we're going to start with the beautiful Roma, or plum tomatoes, fresh. Um, of course, we're going to use um, pancetta, and I've sliced this pancetta about eighth of an inch thick. You need about four or five slices. We're also going to use um, a clove of garlic. We're going to use about half of a large onion or one small onion. We're going to use whipping cream, of course. Um, and then, of course, the star of the show is the vodka. We're going to use that. And then um, I'm also going to put some pepper flakes in for spice. Not too much, just enough. It'll be wonderful. And then, of course, our penne pasta. And uh, when I cook this dish, especially when I'm cooking it for friends at a dinner party, what I love to do is I like, I like to make the puree in advance so it's ready to go. But when my friends come over, we start with cocktails, my husband makes us a martini, and we all stand around the kitchen, and I can make the sauce in about a half an hour, 40 minutes, while we're drinking, maybe having a little appetizer, and just chatting. And then once it's ready, we serve it right away, and we go sit down, and it's a wonderful evening. So here's to your dinner parties, and uh, enjoy. Cheers. So the first step in making our penne alla vodka is actually making the tomato puree. And as I said, I'm using these beautiful, fresh Roma tomatoes. And this is so easy, you can't believe it. You probably want to make more sauce like this from scratch now that you know. But let me show you what you do. So basically, for this recipe, I've got about 10 to 12 Roma tomatoes, um, also called plum tomatoes, as I said earlier. And you just simply score the tops and the bottoms of them. And you do that to each one. And then uh, you put them into a pot of boiling water. So you do you boil them for about 20 minutes. It sort of depends on how um, hard or ripe the tomatoes are. I like to get my tomatoes the day before so that they have a day to sit and just get a little bit soft. But what happens is when you boil the tomatoes, um, for, like I said, for about 20 minutes, um, the the skins just start to peel away. And so they're very very easy um, to take the skins off. And that's what you want for your puree. So what I've got here is I've got my tomatoes. They've been boiled. And let me show you how beautiful um, and quite easy this is. I've just let them cool a bit, take them out of the water. And you can literally just peel the skin back, just like that. And then once you peel the skin back, just like that, take it all off. You also want to get rid of the, um, the tough ends and anything that looks like it's not ripe. So if it's yellow or green, you don't want that um, in your sauce. That's going to create a bitter taste. Um, we are ultimately going to put all of this into the blender. So I'm not too worried about how it looks. It's all going to just get blended up into a nice, rich, thick sauce. But you can see there's that tough piece right there. Um, it's sort of a greenish yellow color. Um, and you just, you just want to get all the nice, red um, skin around it, but you don't want that in your sauce. So you just go through all these little tomatoes, take off the skins, leave all of the goodness, all of the meat, um, and all of the wonderful juices that are in there. And I'll just keep doing that, and then I'll put them into the blender with some garlic, and uh, you'll see how beautiful um, that puree will become from our fresh tomatoes. So our last step in this puree is to put all of that goodness, all of those tomatoes, in your um, blender here. I've also got one large garlic clove. I'm just going to put that right in. And we're going to blend away. So here we go. All the skins off. All of the rough edges off. And here we go. puree is done. So that's your sauce. Um, simple, easy, delicious, fresh. We're going to take that aside and we're going to go start on step two. So stick around. I'll show you what we're going to do next. Now once your puree is complete, the next step is to um, very finely mince the pancetta and the onion. You can also do this in advance so it's ready to go as well. And all we're going to do is we're going to put the pancetta right into a, a food processor fitted with a metal blade. 
And as I mentioned earlier, I've got either a small onion or a um, uh, half of a large onion. I'm just going to put all of that in here. And we're going to let this baby rip. And we're going to do it very finely because the texture of the meat and the onion in the sauce needs to be almost indetectable. So um, you don't want to have it be something that you're going to bite into. It just wants to be smooth as part of the sauce. So here we go. So I'm just going to take a quick look. It's still, I've, let me scrape it down a bit. It's still got a little bit too much oniony texture. I'm going to mince it a little bit more. It'll almost turn out to be um, the texture of, of, of ground beef or ground turkey. And there you go. I'll show you what that looks like. Just like that. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to put that into, when we start to cook our sauce, we're going to put that into a hot, uh, hot pan, a hot, uh, large saute pan, and we'll brown it. So we're going to do that next, and then we'll get the sauce started. Okay, I've got a hot pan here. And this is almost just like cooking bacon, which is essentially what your pancetta is, is bacon. But we're just going to saute this, like I said, about medium heat. You don't want to burn it. You don't want to overdo it. It's like bacon. You want to cook it a little bit slow for about 15 to 20 minutes. And it'll get nice and golden brown. And at that point, you'll be ready to start your sauce. So you can see the pancetta and the onion mixture is getting very nice and brown. It's not there yet. It's been cooking for about 12 minutes, so we have another five to seven minutes or so to go. Um, again, you can't always just go by the clock. You have to go by how it looks and, and how it feels. I'm keeping it over a medium heat so that it's not burning. You definitely do not want to burn. And uh, you also don't need any olive oil in this or any kind of oil base. Again, it's bacon. Um, and it creates its own nice natural lubricant. So um, I'm going to keep cooking, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So our pancetta and onion mixture is definitely done. You can see it's a beautiful golden brown. I've been stirring it occasionally, just, uh, just a bit here and there. And now we're going to get into step three, which is making this gorgeous sauce. Okay, we're ready for step three, and that's putting the sauce all together. So we have this beautiful golden brown pancetta, and we're going to pour our homemade puree in. We want to turn the heat down because we just we don't want it to uh, boil here. We just want it to begin to simmer. This is about six cups of liquid all together. Beautiful. I'm going to bring that heat down a bit more to low. Do a low simmer. Get it all mixed up here and put a pinch or so of red pepper flakes, depending on what heat you like. I'm just going to start with a little pinch because we can always put more on after the fact. And after this is nice and combined, starting to look gorgeous, we're going to cover it partially with a lid and just let it simmer and sizzle and get all of those wonderful flavors working in concert for about 30 minutes. And after that, we'll add the vodka and we'll add the cream and then we'll add the pasta. Okay, it's been 30 minutes, and our sauce is ready for the addition of the vodka. So we're going to do that. That's a half a cup of unflavored vodka. We're going to stir it up, and we're going to let that simmer again for about 10 minutes. As you can see, the sauce has significantly reduced. It's nice and thick. And now we're going to add a cup of heavy cream. And this is where you have to sort of use your best judgment because if you feel like a full cup of heavy cream is just a bit much for your taste and that's just going to make it too rich, then just back off a little bit. Just add a little bit, stir it up, 
see how it looks, give it a taste. You're also going to want to put some salt and pepper in it at this point. And then if you want to add a little bit more, add a little bit more. And then this is going to just need to come back up to temperature because that cold cream is going to change the temperature of your sauce. You want to just bring it back up to temperature for another five minutes or so. Just let it simmer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that al dente pasta and we're going to drag it through the sauce. Um, the reason we do that, as opposed to just putting the sauce on top of the pasta, is that you want your pasta to have sauce all over inside, just really stuck on like glue to your pasta. Our sauce is done and we're ready to go. So I've actually drained the pasta. Here it is. It, like I said, it's al dente. I didn't rinse it because you want that starch to be on the pasta when you put it into the sauce. You want every bit of sauce that can possibly stick to your pasta to actually stick to the pasta. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do what's called dragging the pasta through the sauce. There we go. And essentially what that means is we're just going to pull the pasta through the sauce so that the sauce gets inside the nooks and crannies, inside those little penne uh, vessels. The penne is just a vessel for the sauce, basically. And uh, we're just going to let it warm in here for one to two minutes because the pasta is hot, the sauce is hot, but we want to just let it all kind of meld together. And then we'll serve it with some pretty parm on top. And, uh, and then, you know, salt and pepper to taste if necessary. Maybe put a little red pepper flakes on the table so that people can add a little bit more spice um, if they like. But it's just gorgeous. So our penne alla vodka is done. It's ready to serve. So I'm going to take this beautiful plate. I'm going to plate it up just like this. Little mound of wonderful pasta. And then I love to put some nice shaved parm on top. And you can buy shaved parm at the grocery store or just shave it yourself. And even if you want to add a little flair, shave it in front of your guests. Um, but this is it. It's a beautiful, beautiful dish and it's delicious. This particular dish serves about six people. Um, I also generally serve it with an arugula, um, an arugula salad, um, just with olive oil, balsamic, salt and pepper on the salad, just not a lot of crazy flavors, because this is the star of the show. Penny pasta alla vodka, the brown lounge style. <laughs>